Hi, Chip. Thank you so much for joining me in the personal branding series that I run on my blog, Introscope. As you know, this is a long running series with thought leaders on their perspectives on personal branding. So thank you again for taking the time. Uh, before we begin, it would be great if you could quickly introduce yourself to our viewers. OK, thank you. Uh, and I'm blessed and it's a pleasure to be on your program this morning. Uh, this morning, this time, late at night in India. Uh, I'm Chip Helm. I've uh, been in the medical industry for 35 years. I've worked for a multi-billion dollar medical company for that long. Uh, just a little bit of knowledge about me. I uh, have three children. Uh, one is a fourth year medical student. One's a fourth year vet student. And oh, one is going on to dental school. So you can oh. see that I've, I've uh, hopefully I've uh, trained them well, uh, but I can tell you it's all because of their mother. Their mother <laughs> has smarts uh, in the family. Uh, so I'm just very uh, uh, blessed because um, all this about personal branding came to fruition for me uh, a few years ago when I was writing a couple books. And um, I didn't realize how important personal branding is. And I'm so fortunate and blessed to come on and discuss it with you because one thing I'll start out by saying is I didn't realize when I started my career 35 years ago, what a personal brand was, why it was important. I had no idea. I probably didn't discover it, uncover it, and do something about it until probably five to six years into my job. So from that standpoint, but it allowed me to share all of that information in a couple of books I wrote, uh, one on everyday sales wisdom, uh, for your life and career. And the other one I think is bigger than sales, how humility and relationships build uh, career success. And it's kind of funny because you never put the word sales with mm. humility. Mm. People don't think salespeople are humble. <laughs> but, uh, but I believe that regardless of what you do in your life, what career you're in, where mm. you go, if you're a teacher, if you're a, you know, a drug rep, if you are a, a marketing person, everyone's in sales and mm. personal branding is at probably at the highest level of understanding and knowing what that is and knowing that it's really important to have one. Great. That's that's a great introduction, great insights. In fact, uh, when you mentioned that you know everyone's into sales, I, I happen to remember the book I read to sell is human by Dan Pink, and he says that you know we are all in the business of selling. Uh, so great. I mean, so according to you, what is personal branding? How would you define it? You know, it's pretty it's pretty simple in my mind, because first of all, let's step back and say what it's not. Everybody thinks when they think of the word brand, mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to them is Amazon, mm -hmm. is uh, Netflix. It's right. not it's not the company brand that we're speaking of today. It doesn't mean that the company brand isn't important. Mm -hmm. Most people think when they think about brands, they think about a company brand. So that's first of all, they never think that they have to have their own personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I guess if I have to sum it up in one phrase about mm -hmm. a personal brand, mm -hmm. it really boils down to what other people think about you. Mm -hmm. You may think you, we all love ourselves. Mm -hmm. We all think we're the greatest. Right. We just cannot live without ourselves, mm -hmm. but it's not as important in the real world until what does someone else think about you? What's mm -hmm. their perception? It's really is what others think about you mm -hmm. begin to create your own brand, uh, right. your own personal brand. I'll start there. Fantastic. And if I were to ask you, you know, how do you know that you're making progress with your personal brand? So what are some of those signs which tell you that, yes, I know I am progressing and in becoming a personal brand? Well, I mean, I think one of the key things, if you work for somebody else, mm -hmm. if you're not fortunate to be an entrepreneur or fortunate to be your own boss, one way to realize how your personal brand is, is moving along is what I call rules of engagement. Uh -huh. is sit down with your boss, uh 
Mm. Uh, talk to your boss. Find out how that person wants to communicate with you. How mm. often do they want to communicate? Do they right. like to text? Do they like to email? What are their right. expectations of you? What right. do they think about you? What I mean, what are your strengths? What are things that aren't your strengths? Right. That's one way of understanding how you're how you're moving along, you know, with your right. uh, personal brand. Also, right. touch uh, with colleagues, right. touch with friends to understand. Ask right. them, what right. do you think about me? Be honest, be truthful. Don't right. tell me what you want me to hear. What right. I want to hear, tell me what I need to know. So right. it's an ongoing stage of, I don't think personal brand ever ends. It's a right. continual, it's in motion all the time. Right. And I think it boils down to, understanding the self-awareness uh your cool. environment and your surroundings around you to continually mm -hmm. to monitor and understand your personal brand got it that that's great interesting points so if i would ask you if you were to reflect on your journey and uh, you know what what does one need to do to go about building a personal brand what are some of those steps or building blocks i tell you one thing first you gotta realize you need it it's like an alcoholic anonymous like an alcoholic you know, you stand up in front of the group and you go, hi, I'm Chip Helm. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Well, I'm Chip Helm and I have I don't have a personal brand or I don't have a brand that's been uh, well received by somebody else. So that's the first thing. Most people don't think they probably need to work on a personal brand because they're so good. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to realize we all have faults. Good. We all don't realize things are going on. So you got to realize it first. The realization is the hardest part. Then right. you've got to write it down. You're going to start putting, get a piece of paper out. It's very simple. Get mm -hmm. a piece of paper out and start writing down what you think you are. Start mm -hmm. with your values. Start mm -hmm. with your core values of, of who you are. Start And then look at your talents. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're good at? Mm -hmm. You know, and last but not least, but it really is, what are your passions? What do you want to be good at? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do in life? Write it down. Start creating that, as I call it, that masterpiece. Mm. And once you've created that masterpiece, then develop a statement mm. that evolves around those values, evolves mm. around your talents, or evolves around your passion so people know in a few sentences who mm. Chip Hill is or who John Doe is. So create mm. that. And then you've got to begin to uh, instill it. You've mm. got to... You've got to address it. Um, mm. You've got to monitor it. You've got to continually get feedback. Mm. And how is your personal brand going? Because I'll be honest with you, I have uh, fallen off the tallest ladder in the world and hit the ground a few times on mm. my personal brand. And, and it hurts. And it's mm. a lot, you know, as they say, you know, you can, um, uh, you, it may take you a lifetime to build your brand. But it only takes a few seconds to lose it. And I'll mm. be honest with you, as we go through this conversation, and I'll be very honest and raw, I've lost it a couple times, and uh, I didn't realize it, and it was, it was very hurtful. Good. And you know, if I were to ask you, what are, what are some of the attributes of a personal brand? And when people look at you, Chip, what, what are some of the key words that come to their minds? I hope it comes, I hope humble is at the top. I hope humility. I hope treating people with kindness. And when I say this next day, treating people like you want to be treated. You know, the golden rule is treat others like they want to be treated, treat others like you want to be treated. Um, you know, um, there's, there's, there's a saying that a good friend of mine said, you know, treat your employees like you want your employees to treat the customer. So I think a lot of that has to do with kindness, servant leadership, uh, putting others first. Um, Honesty, you know, integrity. Um, what's do I have a heart? You know, do I do things with the right intent and the right heart? I may not do it right. right. I may be perceived incorrectly because that's another discussion we can always talk about inside yeah. your personal branding. Perception is reality. It yeah. doesn't matter if you didn't do it. If they think you did do it, you did do it. And how do you deal with that in your personal brand head and go, right. I didn't do it. But they think I did it, so I did do it. 
So how do I move on and build that personal brand and how, as I call it again, those yeah. rules of engagement? How do yeah. I interact with my colleague that I upset or my boss that doesn't understand or probably perceives me this way? So mm -hmm. I, I hope that that's some of the core. And then my the talents. I mean, I'm a relationship builder. Mm -hmm. I learned early on. I could network. So you got to you got to go with your strengths. Mm -hmm. You got to talents are what your passions a passion could be different than a talent mm. but your passion drives you because if you're so passionate you won't uh, fail uh, i lost you there we go and yeah. uh, so i think that's how you begin to understand uh about your who you are but the mm. other side of that too is you got to be able to write down things that you don't do very well mm. uh, i used to be impatient mm. uh, Maybe I was short with people sometimes. Mm. Maybe it was what I appeared. I want to know those things because right. I think you need to be the same thing on Tuesday as you are on Thursday as you are on Saturday. You need right. to be consistent in your in your life and your messaging and your personal branding to people. Got it. Got it. So, Chip, uh, you know, who are, you know, if you can give, give me a couple of names of people who you admire as personal brands and what, what are some of those attributes that you admire about them? Well, probably the the one or two people. I'll start with my father, mm -hmm. who is deceased. Um, he spoke when necessary. Mm -hmm. My mother kind of, you know, led the family. Uh, he was a humbled man. He worked hard. He mm -hmm. worked hard. I think that's, you know, that's a value, and that's mm -hmm. a, and that's a, and um, right. he was caring. Um, mm -hmm. yet forceful. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I think he tried to be empathetic and sympathetic. I think that's part of a personal brand. Another mm -hmm. person, uh, an ex CEO of, of one of the, the medical company that I have been working for, mm -hmm. uh, he has a way of how he deals with people. He puts mm -hmm. others, first. he, uh, is very engaging when he mm -hmm. walks into a you want to talk to him. He he cares mm -hmm. about you. Uh, mm -hmm. He believes in you. He wants you to be the best of the best. Uh, mm -hmm. He allows you room to grow. Mm -hmm. um, it's a kind of that's a kind of personal brand. But you'd be mm -hmm. amazed that most people aren't like that. And mm -hmm. you know it, you know it's interesting how how the understanding of a personal brand is. It's but I really think it's how can you. If you do things the right intent, right. the right heart, you'll probably be okay. But the mm. problem comes into this mess. Why mm. you're an expert, why you have been dealing with personal branding and, and teaching it and probably coaching it and stuff is because it's, it's messy. Because mm -hmm. it gets messy, it's because it's what other people think about you. And yeah. unfortunately, the perception is reality in the real world. And I wrote a chapter in one of my books about perceptions, reality, and mm -hmm. how do you take a deep breath and say, it's okay, I understand that I may not be perceived that well, but then how do I change it? At mm -hmm. least how do you deal with it? How do I yes. accept it and move on? Got it. So, Chip, you know, when you look at your journey, I mean, what are some of the couple of challenges that you faced uh, uh -huh. when you went about building a personal brand? What, what are some of the techniques you used to overcome them? Or rather cope with them. Well, first of all, first of all, you got to get back up and dust yourself off. Because I think one time early in my career, I was on a tall ladder. I was move, moving like a rocket ship. I was moving up. The company thought I was good. I, I, I'm the best of the best. How can life not get any better? And all of a sudden, I fell off this tall ladder and hit the ground. And it took me a long, long time to get back up on that ladder. And even so, the first thing you got to do when that happens is I'm a good person. I did things with the right intent and right heart. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. Yes, I understand perceptions, reality. But first of all, I got to realize I'm a good person. I got to get up off that ground. You know, I, I really believe that you got to fail to succeed. You got to fail to succeed. And I believe that that's the first step into getting back is to realize I'm okay. Maybe I made a mistake, maybe I didn't, but it doesn't matter that I'm okay. Then you've got to start really building. Uh, I talk a lot about self-awareness. Uh, 
Self-awareness is such an integral part of personal branding. What do I mean? I mean that you've got to begin to look around. I always say, observe more, listen more, talk less. And I, and I can tell you that many things I probably have said over the years have gotten taken out of context. Uh, I probably said something that was taken the wrong way, and that uh, hurt my brand. But people have got to be careful. I wish it was. I wish you were talking to me 35 years ago. I wish somebody would have got on to me and coached me and said, hey, Chip, listen, when you go into the real world, be careful when you go uh, to a, a sales meeting. Be careful when you go to a business function. Be care, watch who's around you. Watch who's at the table next to you. Watch who's at the bar next to you. Watch, um, you know, what's going on around you. Uh, speak less. Um, I'll, I'll tell another thing that hurts people's brand is is alcohol. Mm. I over the years that I've seen in 35 years, that's destroyed people's careers. So watch, you know, because even if you drink one beer, you know, what do you like? You like a beer? Every now and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just be careful because, as far as I'm concerned, the golden rule should be probably in a business setting you shouldn't drink at all, because alcohol brings out things that you don't normally say. It makes you loose lips, it makes you talk, and you know, things that you probably shouldn't. Uh, you're going to listen to what you see is what you get. I'm very honest; as the day is long, so there's lots of things that go on with a, a personal brand. But I think the biggest downfall that most people have is, is they don't realize it. Then they got to realize it. Then you either got to create it. If you don't have one, then you got to try to sustain it. And then when you fail and you fall, then how do you get back up, dust yourself off, and realize that I'm still working on my self-awareness? 35 years later, as much as I believe I know, uh, I still don't know enough about how to control self-awareness. Mm, mm, interesting. Yeah, I think these are great insights. And you're, you're right about being aware of your, yourself and of, of your surroundings. And I think that's a, that's a great, great point that you made there. So if I were to ask you, you know, there are a lot of people um, who are wanting, who are very keen to build their brands and they want to start from scratch. So what, what, what advice would you give them? Oh, well, I mean... Yeah, and I'm a very, I'm a KISS guy. Keep it simple and sweet, or keep it simple, stupid. Uh, it's not. This is not a. You know the way that I teach it and, and coach it in my in, in the books I've written and and how I correspond and mentor people is we literally start from scratch. Like you said, I like the word start from scratch because we literally sit down and we talk. And we find out, first of all, do you even know what it is? Why is it important? Why do you think a personal brand is important? It's important because do you want a promotion? Do you want to make more money? Do you want to build a network of, of clients? Do you? I could go on and on and on. So we go through, we really write through a list. I call it a to-do list. We'll put down a list of what is it? You know, why do you think it's important? And then we'll begin the journey of starting, okay, let's start with your core values. What are they? What are your talents? What are your passions? This takes a while. It's not just a you know half an hour, but we really dive into it. And uh, but one thing, but as we go along, then we develop a statement. It actually is a oh, I call it a paragraph max, yeah. three, four, five sentence statement about you that evolves around those values, what you provide, the talents that you have, and then you know what how 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 are you unique. You know, and providing these talents to someone. Why would someone want to buy something from you? Why would someone want to buy, you know, my books? You know, we really go through step by step process. It's it's a core. It's almost a course, you know, in a sense of the word. And so and so, but 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 the hidden secret here, the really the hidden the juice is the juice worth the squeeze. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to say what I'm going to say next is you sit down with a best friend. You mm-hmm. sit down family member you sit down with someone you trust and you get a piece of paper they get a piece of paper and you play the five word game mm. five word game it's you, you in five words separate words you tell me what you think about me mm. i'll do the same thing about what i think about myself you'll mm. be amazed how different they are mm. be amazed what you thought that about yourself your That's your trust advisor your friend doesn't think that about you and that is critical step in 
and understanding and realizing and moving forward with their personal brand is play the five word game. Mm-hmm. And I'm just telling you, you do that, that will open your eyes up. And, right. and then you begin that process of putting mm-hmm. it together. And I think the biggest thing too is that rules of engagement that I talked about is it's a very important to have that every month, monthly, quarterly, mm-hmm. with, you, with someone who advises you or who uh, controls your paycheck or right. controls your promotion. If you're, if, you're, if you're working for somebody, every quarter you should sit down and you should mm-hmm. talk about your brand and you mm-hmm. should revisit it and find out, am I still doing the things that you want me to do? Is right. it, am I still working towards those goals? Do you mm-hmm. see me doing this? Have I changed a little bit? Am I, you know, yeah. uh, you really want to have that. I really think it's, it's critical. I didn't have that. I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. I, and that's where I failed. Mm-hmm. I didn't sit down and have the rules of engagement. I didn't mm-hmm. sit down and have, really have a trusted to figure out through the five word game. I never mm-hmm. delivered, I never created a, 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 a personal brand statement. Mm-hmm. I never sat down and really jotted things down and spent time figuring mm-hmm. out possibly who I was. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure about my talents. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. Did you know that uh, most people in the country don't have passions? And well, so. You know, uh, until you create or find a passion that you love, when you are so passionate about something, you won't mm-hmm. let yourself fail. Well, that's right. part of this personal brand excursion or journey. But the journey never ends because as quick as you got, as quick as you figured it out, the yeah. quicker you lose it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so it's, that's a constant, it's a constant battle. It's not a yeah. battle. It goes back again to one word again. If I really believe I could teach and 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 so it's about being more self-aware of what's going on around you, and where are you, and and uh, listen before you speak, and and really have to visualize it in your mind and really understand. You know, uh, start observing more. People don't look around and understand what's around them that could help them. But what worse is what's around them that could hurt them. So a related question to that, Chip. So there are, you know, right now we are going through this pandemic and you know the economy is down. So from a for a personal brand, I mean, what should they do differently or should they continue doing what they're doing? Because right now there's been a lot of cases where personal brands have not really been who they are and that has hurt uh, you know their own brand. So what, what's your advice for people during this particular period of time or during any crisis, so to speak? And I was on a call last night. We talked about this exact thing. Oh. Um, and I looked at the person in the Zoom. I was on a call just like this. And I looked at the person who was asking the questions or we were talking about this last night. And I said, don't do anything different than what you're doing. And here's what I mean by that. Don't try to be something you're not. Mm. I don't, I use my hands when I talk in person. Right. Yeah. I don't change my tone of my voice. I don't change how I talk to you right now because I'm on a Zoom instead of you being at my table across having a cup of coffee. I don't treat you any differently. I don't use any kind of different language. I use the same tone, the same expressions. I visualize that you are right next to me right now, we're having a cup of coffee and we're having a conversation. So my point is you really don't change who you are and how you communicate with someone. Now, if you're not good at communicating and you're not good at speaking, that's another separate thing because I teach phone skills. You know, how I teach virtual skills, you know, because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It is your tone. People hear in their in their voice in your voice, and right. now if you're sure. and they see if you're excited to talk uh, on right. a Zoom call. I don't care what kind of meeting you've got to come to a Zoom call the same way you'd come to person to person with energy, high energy, mm-hmm. uh, with I prepare for every Zoom call. Mm-hmm. I I prepare, prepare. I know my audience, mm-hmm. so there's no different if you think about it. I do the same preparation, the same things I set up ready to go when I come into your office to talk to you, right. or I get the phone, and, and I also teach about phone skills. People mm-hmm. can hear you through the phone. 
They can sense a lot of things about you. I think what's happening, people are getting wigged out. Don't. Everyone take a deep breath Mm -hmm. and just sit back and say, you know what? The only difference is is I can't be in front of you. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same way when I talk to you on the Zoom. And when Mm -hmm. I pick up the phone and call you, I email Mm -hmm. you. And I text you. That's another thing. People have got to understand how to text better. They got to understand how to email better. They got to be more. What do I mean by that? I mean that's part of your personal brand. Be very creative in your texting. Mm. You'll be very creative in your email. What I mean is you've got to really, really come across with kindness, Mm. because unless I tell you I love you Mm. on an email. Are you the greatest thing since sliced bread? By the way, that's an Indiana term. Um, you're going to interpret the email differently. Right. You're going to someone's text differently. So right. you've got to be really, really creative about your text messages. It mm. has to be so empathetic, so sympathetic, so obvious. Mm. There won't be any interpretation issues. So right. I write a lot of emails. I write a lot of text messages explaining to people how mm-hmm. you can write those. Not just mm-hmm. a yep, not mm-hmm. just a oh, how are you? It's, you know, because remember something, people want you to get back. That's another thing. The biggest thing you could do through personal branding and how you can continue your personal branding is get back to people. Right. People just want to be acknowledged. Yeah. They want to acknowledge that you that they got your phone call, you got their phone call, that you got their text message, you got their email. You've got to be more, as I call it, Johnny on the spot than you've right. ever been through this virtualness. Because mm-hmm. the quicker you get back, mm-hmm. I teach people all the time, don't wait. It's mm-hmm. a sense of urgency. You text me, I'll get right back. At least if you have a sense of urgency, you'll do it in a, in a fairly orderable time frame. Right. What happens is, People are used to not getting back for 24 hours, 48 mm. hours, until they have an answer. But right. now it's a virtual world right now, and I can and I can't touch you and see you really up close and see those. You know, you've got to get back to people even mm. faster, better, more efficient, and you've got to be so creative right now in your text met. And I don't mean it's not it's not something that's life. You know, I'm, I teach you that you've just got to use the right words in that. The kind words. You uh-huh. can't use a, a word that could be interpretable. You know, uh-huh. interpret differently. You've got to yeah. you've got to spell it out that actually, unless it's a real problem. And then the last thing to do is then pick up the freaking phone. Right. Pick up the phone. Yeah. People don't. People aren't good on phone skills. They're not uh-huh. used to calling you. They're uh-huh. not used to picking up the phone. And having to call someone on the other end, it's fearful. Get over the fear. The Mm -hmm. fear is treat them just like if you were in person. Come with preparation, preparation, preparation. Come Mm -hmm. with questions ready to go. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I love love that. Yeah. And so if, if, you know, if you were to reflect on your life and if there was an opportunity to change one thing about how you went about your building your personal brand, what would that be? I've said over and over and over again over my 35 years, and maybe I would have been president of a company. Maybe I'd been an astronaut. Maybe I'd be the king of the world. I wish I always have done things in my 35 years with the right heart and the right intent. I wish I was smarter about my self-awareness. I always thought that uh, everyone liked me. And I always thought that, you know, I meant well. So nobody was ever going to take things out of context. And, right. and but it's the real world out there. And, and no matter what uh, uh, time of your life you're in, you know, where you are in your career, uh, right. people do right. throw people under the bus. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if you've ever heard that term. They right. do that. Don't believe that, that they don't. I wish I knew that. I wish I knew about the self-awareness of what you could say can come back to bite you. Be careful about, you know, what you do at business meetings. Just, you know, be a little more astute. And I wish I was 25 years old. I was 30. I was 30. And I wish going back, uh, if I could teach anything or impart anything, if anybody picks up anything today, you know, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the demon. For most, 
but also it could be also the one where it could be also the greatest thing that can happen if you can just be uh, more self-aware of your surroundings, uh, work a lot more, listen a lot more, and probably speak less, you know, probably. Uh, but, you know, I can't change my life. Right. And, I, and I remember something, I don't regret anything, but if I had to do it all over again, I continue to struggle with that uh, as part of my personal brand. And that's probably why I share a lot. And um, because I wish somebody would have taken the time to shake me, you know, and say, yeah, that's not what you do. Yeah. You know? and, uh, and it has not changed. It has not changed 35 years ago to 35 years today. I learned some things about some other companies the last week. I'm going, oh, my God, you mean people still do this? They still you know, hurt people and they, and they throw them under the bus and they, and they want to get to where they're going. And so they'll do whatever it takes. And uh, they, they're jealous of smart people or they're jealous of people who are smarter than them, or they want to hold you back. I always, always said the greatest compliment to a leader, the best leader through personal branding or through any times is, is someone who cares more about how to get you from A to Z right. and care about how they get from A to Z. That's mm -hmm. the problem in the world today with personal branding and leadership. It kind of connects itself together is that mm -hmm. most leaders are more worried about getting from A to Z instead mm -hmm. of getting their employees from A to Z. And, and that's where, that's where the problem is. We should be more worried about helping other people get there than ourselves because we help other people. Right. all come back tenfold for ourselves. So, Chip, as we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you, what's your personal branding mantra or what are your closing remarks about personal branding and how others should really approach it? That's a great ending uh, question. And uh, like I said, I'm a simple man. You know, I, I don't think uh, uh, that's what people said when they read my books. And I don't think that uh, things have to be real, real technical. I think it's really, really simple to acknowledge. I think you know it's like a three or four step process here. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's to acknowledge that there is such a thing as called a personal brand, and that's important. And go through the whys and what it is. I really believe, in, and that's the hardest part because everyone right. thinks about a company brand, um, but they never think about their personal brand. They think a company brand is more important. Uh, but I think that you need to do that. You need to acknowledge it, recognize it. You need to write a statement. You need to develop that brand. And then you need to live that brand. And then you need to have that rules of engagement. Every quarter, you need to have feedback is important. But let me, actually, there's one thing I want to end on because it's really important. I, I do this as a uh, as a game almost, but I, you know, there's, there's three recognitions you get in life. Mm -hmm is working some it's a company recognition right it is customer recognition or it's industry recognition I'll, I'll throw this back to you uh mr mc mr uh what do you think is the most important thing a company recognition an industry recognition or customer recognition you you tell me what you think is the most important well i would add the fourth one i think it's you know, if your family values you and if you if you're doing what's right for your family and your values, I think that's that's more I think that's more encouraging and more enriching than anything else. So I would look at it from that angle. So that's the fourth angle I would put back. <laughs> uh, you know, you just gosh, I, I mean, can I steal that from you? That That's an actually an actual. OK, but let's say in that outside the family. And I agree with you, by the way, I didn't look at that angle. You know, because I'd always put family first. But right. let's throw the let's put the family aside, company, industry, or customer. Well, I would put it as the customer because finally, you know, you whatever you're doing adds value to the customer, and in the process, it adds value to the company, and in the process, adds value to the industry. So I think I would look at from that context. There's no question in my mind personally. That the customer, when you have customer recommendation uh, recognition, you know you win. Even yeah. industry recognition is great because when your colleagues think that you you yeah. know what you're doing, great. But here's the real truth about all this. Mm. Uh, don't close your ears. Whoever's listening out there wants, unfortunately, 
however you want to look at this. Unfortunately, if you want to look at your per, the personal brand and you want to deal with personal branding and you work for somebody else, mm. the company brand is the most, the company recognition is the most important thing. And why do I say that? Unfortunately, I say that. Mm. I don't believe it. I don't mm. like it. Uh, maybe that was my my problem is because if they control your purse strings, yeah. control your promotion, if they control how you conduct business from day to day, then, right. then unfortunately it plays a greater role. And right. probably what happened to me looking back, mm. I really, I was extremely good at the industry and the and the customer recognition. That mm. that came natural. Mm. I didn't focus. I wasn't aware. I didn't I didn't bring that in as a third part of the wheel. Mm. I probably should have, and that's what I would tell someone out there. Don't forget that beast over here. Yeah. I know it's important over here, but yeah. that company is going to impact your personal brand. And one kind of goes without the other. And so they kind of go hand in hand. And that's how I would I, that's how I would leave it for you today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chip. I think these have been brilliant insights. I really love the conversations. I'm sure our viewers will love it too. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Well, I mean, I know it's late where you are. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'm very blessed. Um, thank you for even uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, and you know, if I were you right now, I'd probably go have a beer. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chip. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye.